Now, unfortunately, what happens in this state is a lot of times this person here believe, believes themselves now to have a connection with God. What he, what he called in his, his summary the I am presence like, and losing all sense of individualization. Remember I said that was one of the most inaccurate things he could have said. The truth is that what happens in this state is a lot of people get into this place where they lose their sense of self. But remember I've said right from the beginning to you that the whole point of the process of incarnation is about gaining your sense of self. And there is this huge inaccurate error that's being, that's being portrayed on the planet that if you have a sense of self that you are now out of harmony with truth about oneness. And that is not true. The truth is you can be at one with everything and everyone and still have individualization, a sense of self. Why create a process, if you think about it from God's perspective, why would God create a process that creates individualization only for you to have to lose individualization to get back to God in the end? Now that doesn't make much sense really, does it? Obviously there is a way back to God that allows for you as an individual to develop your free will. And remember too that free will is paramount in all of God's designs. But remember what Hawkins said he was doing? That he was making his free will subject to the will of the presence. What is that actually doing? That is actually making his will subject to the will of the controlling presence. Now let's assume for a moment that as he does assume by the way that this controlling presence is God. Let's assume that for a moment. All right. If the controlling presence is God then why would God have given him free will only to expect him to relinquish it in the process of his development? And that doesn't make much sense either, does it? Why would you give something and then take, take it away? You don't, wh that makes no sense. It's not very economical either. So, so oftentimes these spirits will actually say, basically they feel they are God. Right? So many spirits who have reached the sixth sphere of their development believe they are God and so therefore when they connect with you, they are in total agreement with your assumption that you're now connecting with God because they believe they are God. But the truth is they still have a spirit body. They still have a connection with that spirit body of their own and they are not being honest in, in a pure sense with you in that state. They are being quite dishonest about their particular state. And by the way, this also applies to the spirit who, who channeled the conversations of God material to Neil Donna Walsh. It applies to many of the other channeled materials like the, the spirit who channeled the Course in Miracles material and so forth. Many of, many of these either claim to be God or, 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 or allow the person to build on the assumption they are God when in reality they actually do have a spirit body and any body of development on the earth who can see them can see that body. So it's actually a very, very um, damaging belief system that gets created by these assumptions. And many of us, because we can't see the spirit body of the spirit influencing the person, we then assume that they must be connecting with God. And that is not a valid assumption. It is only something we hope to believe or wish to believe or hope to aspire to, but it may not be true and we have to investigate it to be true. So unless we could get a whole room full of people like this who are all mediums who can see very clearly spirits and then get one of these people who say they are enlightened here in front of you and then ask what spirit is with them and motivating them and talk to that spirit. If, if there's not a spirit, we won't find a spirit. Unless we do all of those experimentations, we're not going to be able to validate the truth of the information, are we? So why would we then go ahead and believe it if we can't validate it? We're better off being in a state where we can allow the validation of the material then believe it. So what I'm suggesting to you if you don't believe me now about what I've been presenting to you for the last two hours is put it aside for a little and then when if, uh, you know, long for the opportunity to, to validate this truth or not and sooner or later inside of your own system of 
of attractions, what's going to come to you is an opportunity to actually see the spirits or no spirits with these people who you have actually looked up to as gurus in the past, right? And by the way, another thing is that these spirits do want these people to look up to them as a guru type person. In fact, many of these spirits call themselves, like, and you feel, and you, the people on earth therefore call themselves an avatar, and it's not the movie, it's the, like, <laughs> it, they call themselves an enlightened being. Well, the truth is, if a person's on the divine love path, they're never fully enlightened, are they? Because if divine truth is infinite, are you ever going to know all the truth like God does? No. So therefore you are never going to be fully enlightened as God is. God is the owner of all truth and we will only ever know a subset of that truth. So every time we claim that we are somebody like an avatar or a guru or whatever else, all we're doing is actually living in this place of arrogance. And that's one of the things we channeled about today too, how, how the spirits that were, who had set up the oneness movement could see their, and, and, and after a while um, Ramtha talked about the issue of arrogance and how arrogance is totally the opposite to humility and what's going on there. So the truth is that we're better off actually now looking at this situation and analysing it completely and saying, all right, we know this spirit is obviously claiming to be God this person is having all of these experiences, but they are fluctuating from experiences of really strong negative emotions through to experiences of complete bliss and then back to experiences of total abject terror and then back to bliss. Now, if a person was actually God, would they be experiencing that? And as Peter pointed out before the session, also, many of these people who are experiencing these emotions have quite a few physical sicknesses in their own body that they're having to cope with. Of course they have, because their own body is getting hammered by a heap of energy that its own soul can't control. Right? And so there's going to be all sorts of spirit and physical body um, things set up inside of themselves, disharmony set up inside of themselves that create lots of problems. Now, We've got to face the truth of all of this. If a person is God and claiming to be such on the earth, then how can they have a physical sickness? How can they ever be old? <laughs> like, how does that happen if they are actually God? Now, obviously, I'm saying to you that there's no one on earth that's actually God <laughs> and there's never been anybody on earth who's actually God. But if there's a person who's connecting with God and getting to a point of at one moment with God, why would they also have sicknesses? Can you see there must be some kind of disharmony? If I am connecting with God and I'm at one with God, then obviously God doesn't have any sickness or illness. So why would I? Does that make sense? So actually there are many things that we can see in a statement of a person who's gone through these kind of experiences, there are many things that we can see actually can be challenged just through logic, let alone having a discussion with the person themselves. But in some cases, when you have a discussion with the person itself, it's very, very interesting. Because the spirit does not want the person to know the truth that you are wanting to talk to them about or to the spirit about. So I've had many conversations with people where where the spirit guiding them has been in total like annoyance and anger towards myself for even raising the issue with the person involved. And you can understand why, because the spirit is actually getting something through the connection. So two and a half years ago when I began talking to the leaders of, or, or I wasn't allowed to talk to the leaders of the, two, of the oneness movement two and a half years ago in the spirit world, they sent some of their what they called their underlings, if you like, at the time, to talk with me because I wasn't worth their attention at the time. Does that make sense? And when we had a chat and I started talking about some experiments that they could try, I also talked about with them this issue of overcloaking people on earth and how damaging that was. Now there were huge amounts of resistance to that discussion and though that resistance remained for nearly a period of two years until the spirits themselves started to see the truth of what was going on. 
now that they can see the truth of what's going on, now they can see the damaging effects of what happens in an overcloaking situation. And they also commented about what they can see in terms of what's happening on earth with regard to the situation. They can see these people walking around as oneness beings in an enlightened state, but in reality the emotional condition of the person is very much in disharmony with the state that they're walking around in because of the influence. Now, when you're at one with God, you do not need to be overcloaked to be in that state. You will be in that state yourself. You won't have to have any spiritual influence or any ex extra spiritual experiences to be in that state because you yourself will be having God's love 24 by 7 